I'm Ivan LaCroix with the Detailers Business Academy, and today my special guest is Nick McGurk from Hawk Pro Detail. What's up, everybody? It's great to be here. Haven't seen Ivan in more than two years. Yeah. Since oh, the pandemic started. Right. You know, the last time we met, we were still shaking hands, uh, not doing fist bumps, and there was a bit of, uh, how can I put it, background noise about this pandemic thing. But they were traveling the country. Yeah. And I feel like we were flexing. We were shaking hands. No big deal. <laughs> we're men. What is this virus? And I think about two weeks after you left Hebrew City, Utah, yeah, is when everything shut down. I mean, right, this was yeah. March 2020. And so yeah. it's now, what, March, March or April, depending on when this goes on your channel of 2022. Right. And I'm in a new shop. I'm in a different place. Yeah. And... You're still you're still traveling the country on the bus. I know you were delayed but for a, a while. Yeah, but a different bus too. So a different bus. The <laughs> yeah. last one was blue, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good so, times. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. So, Nick, uh, people who are fans of your channel and watch your channel may yeah. have noticed that recently not too many videos. It's been an interesting time of transition, which I think to everybody out there who gets obsessed with car cleaning and gets kind of lost in comparison, right? Which is the thief of joy. I'm a human being and right. I have two kids and I haven't shared this before, but you know, I got so lost in detailing, which is not detailing's fault. No, it, no. it was a vessel for this. It probably would have happened in another way, but, um, I just didn't have time. I run a full-time job and then I was doing the detailing and, uh, ended up getting a divorce and it was like hugely traumatic and hard for me. And yes. it was hard to put on the smiling face and do detail videos when went through the hardest period of my life. Right. And, and you know, yeah. your heart wasn't in it, but the reason I have Nick on the channel mm. is simply to show that a detailing isn't everything. It's not. No, it's amazing. I love yeah. it, and I love cleaning cars, and I always will. Right. And B, it's that in life you need to step back. You need to reorganize your priorities, mm -hmm. figure out what your priorities are, and then move forward with a better understanding of who you are, what you want to do with your life, et cetera, et cetera. And that one big priority for you is your kids. Yeah. yeah. I have a five and six year old and I've been able to be a dad with them. And sure, I thought being a dad was maybe a little different before. And I have videos when they were two and three, we were out washing the car and I was like, I'm going to incorporate them into this life. But yeah, it, it was just really hard. I wasn't, and, and anyone out there who knows this, right? Most guys are going to start on the side and you're going to chase the dream. And Ivan's the one to help mm -hmm. you uh, make that a reality. But I would just say, communicate with your partner. Make yeah. sure they're on the same page with you. And I'm not saying this wasn't worth it because you learned so much, but it was a really hard time. And yeah. now I'm really excited about where I am. I'm actually exactly where I want to be. Yeah. And that's not a cop-out. That's, that's the actual truth. But yes. it was a really hard couple of years. And um, for me, I was always the guy who wanted to do what you said not to do, which is spend 80 hours on a car, make it perfect. Right. And I truly enjoy that. I don't think I enjoy running a business, but I'm super passionate about the industry still. I still yeah. love it, you know? So, exactly. Yeah. So you're a, uh, how can I, a detailer's detailer in the sense that <laughs> yeah. you like to... Mental health issues, yeah, exactly. No, but your goal for you is to be passionate about detailing, to enjoy detailing. Mm, absolutely. You're not passionate about running a business. Like, I know you have to work hard when you're detailing. Like, people work really hard yeah. a lot. They don't dilly-dally, they don't go on their phones, they're not there to enjoy it, although they, they probably should be. Yeah. But I've seen working detail shops, and guys are working. And I found myself to be like, oh, we'll do a little of this and do a little of <laughs> that. But the reality is, I love I love it, and it's exactly. fun. And I want other people to love it, too. Um, but then it gets intertwined in, well, I have to turn this into a business, and then I have to be profitable. And I sort of, I slid sort of, what do they say, uh, uh, ass backwards into, into running a business when truly yeah. my passion was was cleaning cars. Right. So moving forward, you're looking more of a, more of a, so moving forward, you're looking more to an educational role in the industry. Yeah. So the Hawk Pro detailing channel is still going to be alive. It's, Absolutely. I, actually, it's coming back. We'll put it that it's way. It's coming back. <laughs> yeah. I just had to take care of some life stuff, which turns out is pretty important. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. But now the Hawk Pro detailing channel uh, you're, you know, you've interviewed people like Jason Rose, you've yep. interviewed Mike Stoops, uh, no, oh, Mike Phillips, Mike, Mike yeah. Phillips, you'll get to Mike Stoops eventually. Yeah. Uh, great guy, by the way. So there's that aspect of Hawk Pro detailing channel and also showing people how to have fun while detailing. 
Absolutely. And, you yeah. know, I, having spoken with you, and even though we personally were together two years ago, we, you know, communication is still there. So everything you've gone through and all that has brought you to the realization that detailing is your hobby and not your career. And I would have good friends in the industry tell me, you're treating this like a hobby, bro. It's a business. But yeah, yeah absolutely. And I went to SEMA this last year and I met Mike Phillips. And in some ways, although my channel has been a little stagnant, it was kind of a transformational moment for the channel because yeah. I was just like, let me see who I can meet. Let me see what booth I find. I mean, I was there for one day with Jamie yeah. Gonzalez who runs JNG Auto Detailing and then Shine Guy's uh, YouTube channel in Salt Lake. And we were just like frenetically going everywhere. And then I saw Mike Phillips and I just stopped. And I was like, I've heard of this guy. Yeah. I know other people have heard of him. And I did an interview with him and to see the way that people approached him because he's sort of the... He's sort of the priest to the DIYer, so to speak. And I don't mean that. The DIYer who's ready to take it seriously and then becomes a really good detail. Yeah, no. But, but the way people responded to him was was so cool. And yeah. he, like, helps people have fun doing exactly. it. Exactly, yeah. You know? You know, Mike, I've met with him. I've interviewed him, all of that. And uh, we've known each other for maybe 15, 20 years. Yeah, yeah. But Mike is such a great personality mm. in the sense that he wants to show people the fun part of detailing, like you said. You know, he's very much into detailing still. Uh, he's running 3D, uh, the 3D training center in Stewart, Florida. Mm -hmm. And he's still on the weekends in there detailing customers' cars. It's wild. I started texting with him. And one day he was just like, oh, sorry, it's taken a while. He sends me just this old classic car. He yeah. got hired to go to someone's garage on a weekend you know, in one day he buffs, polishes, and coats it. And this wasn't your everyday one step, but it's like the dude is a legend. Yeah, we all know what he's overcome having one leg, and yet, yeah. like, he's really out there on those detailing streets doing this work. Like, he actually loves it. You cannot manufacture passion. He is no, such no. an amazing example, and he's still about that life. He's still doing this stuff, and it's yeah. like, wow, that's so cool. You know, yeah. he's a real deal. Yeah. So he's running the three D detailing center training center and at the same time he's doing jobs not on the side you know it's part of what he does but he's out there on the weekend he's at cars and coffee he's mm -hmm. talking about detailing he's doing all that so mike is a great guy and jason rose uh the consummate technician of detailing absolutely you know you did a great interview series with jason uh jason really knows his stuff great guy and I was actually surprised to see him in an interview because that's not his natural habitat. He's not it, used to being the forefront. It was hard for me. I had to navigate some some logistics around that. That uh, To me, I just assumed, hey, there's a human being going to be at this one training at a certain time. I'll interview him. But he's a big deal, and his time's yeah. really valuable. And I had to, th you know, I'm super grateful. There was, um, you know, just some awesome people in Utah um, the folks at Budco were so gracious because they bring them in to train their employees right, yeah. and I'm asking them and, and, you know, they just believe in training and, and they're just great guys. So check out Budco Distributing if you're ever in Salt Lake. Right. Um, they're big promoters of PNS and, and rag company towels and it's just so fun to network with people, you know, and then you get to, you get to talk to someone like Jason and then like people like Jason and folks from Flex. After I did the Mike Phillips story, we're like, Mike Phillips is such a good guy. Thank you for honoring him. That's why I say yeah. it was like a moment in my channel where I feel like, I got to give some respect to an OG, right? Like someone who's been in the game for a long time and hopefully a lot of people who know him got to see it, but then some young kids will see it too. Yeah. It's just, it's cool to be a part of like the telling of the history of this industry because it's such a beautiful one. Yeah. I, I really love detailing. And so anyway, yeah, but talking to Jason, he mentioned this paint burning epidemic coming. So if you didn't see the episode, he said there's like yes. three factors going on. Right. The clear coats are getting way thinner. Yep. Um, consumers are watching our videos and so they know exactly what they want. Give me a four step with <laughs> yeah. dual action sanding and a two layer ceramic. So they're asking for more nuanced and higher level work, which means danger zone, clear coat. So yeah. thinner clear coats, customers are wanting paint correction more because they know what it is. And then the third thing is we have these like Hulk superhuman uh, compounds and buffers that are just yeah. like shaving off clear coat. How many metaphors? Paul Bunyan's axe, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it was just like, here's a warning, you know, get yourself a paint gauge. So, yeah. yeah. And I've always been a proponent of preservation over perfection. Um, and I see that coming around with more and more detailers as well. Because, like you mentioned, 
there's a lot going on. Like Jason mentioned, things are aligning for, let's burn some paint. Uh, there's not a lot of paint on the cars. It's actually the most expensive part of the car as well. Yeah. People don't realize that, but it's actually less expensive to replace the engine than it is to repaint the car. If, well, if it, you're going for OEM quality. Obviously. Let's talk about emotional uh, expenses too. I mean, yeah. the trauma involved of burning someone's paint. Oh, often, yes. often you'll start out as a detailer. You'll kind of fake it till you make it. You'll flex a little bit. Yeah. You'll network with some of the detailers. Maybe you've grown up in it. Maybe you're new to it. Maybe you start to get an ego around the fact that you're around these hundred thousand dollar cars, and yeah. and all of a sudden you're doing this high level work. You're not treated like the help. You're like, kind of an extra special cool help. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not the carpet cleaner, which I've run a carpet cleaning business, and you're the help there. But yeah. they make money if they do it well. Anyway, but it's cool. You start to feel like I do something cool. This is awesome. And then, and then when you burn that paint, man, it's humble pie. It's hard. Like yeah, I still remember how I felt, and the client was not happy. He was a character, you know. He had a lot of money, second home, here in Utah, like million dollar plus home, really expensive car that he had you know, built for him in England, and I, I, I don't even think the paint had cured. I didn't even know any, it was just, yeah, it was a, I still remember it, you know? Yeah, it wasn't a fun experience. No, no, not at all. No, and I've burned paint before, too, sometimes on purpose in a training session. Yeah, yeah, but, and so was Jason, right? We've all, if you haven't burned paint, you're not really doing this. No, no, but yeah. on a customer's car, yes, it's happened before. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's why my focus for preservation over perfection, uh, you know, that last little, Oh, I'll just work it a little more to get that scratch out and phew, gone. Ugh. Yeah, and it's instantaneous too. It seems like it just bang. So definitely, you know. I the, can feel it, man. I yeah. can feel it. Sometimes it's like the polish or the compound is caking up and you think you've burned it. Yeah. Which is a scary moment. But anyway, I interrupted. Yeah. No, no. So that's good. Good, good memories. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> good bad memories. <laughs> uh, good nightmares. But yeah. nonetheless, you know, it's it becomes an educational experience. And right. Hopefully, you won't repeat that experience again. Yeah. Where is this life taking you now? So, in terms of detailing, we mentioned you want to turn into more of an educational role. What can people expect to see on the Hawk Pro Detailing channel? Well, I've got a queue, uh, a, a lineup of, 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 of videos I haven't published yet. Good. And speaking of talking to experts, I actually went to a Ramsco in Salt Lake, they make bio break and flex ice. You know, I went down the rabbit hole with carpet yeah. cleaning. Yeah. I literally started a carpet cleaning business, folks. I went to carpet cleaning technician school. I studied pH, spotters, and I found the best pre spray and um, extraction rinse. Right. So I went to talk to Tom Forsyth, who is the chief chemist there. And oh my gosh, we sat in his lab. And I mean, he is the most. He'll go as esoteric as you want. Right. Like, they're his babies. He's smelling them. He's like, mm -hmm. oh, Flex Ice smells like maple syrup. We worked yeah. hard to get this scent. And he's mm -hmm. like, you know, BioBreak, this is, you know, sold hundreds of millions of dollars in product. And so we go through what the products are, why they work so well. And then we talk about pH, encapsulation, cleaning, yeah. spotting. Um, I take a tour through the facility. It's been sitting on my computer for a while, and I want to publish this video. But thankfully, yeah. it's what they call evergreen content. It's not something that has to be published today, it's still going to be relevant because right. these products work. Yeah. Um, and, I've, you know, the detailing industry has a lot to learn from the carpet cleaning industry. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we use APCs. We use all sorts of stuff that, you know, we shouldn't really be using on interiors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and speaking from a place of, like, humility, because I know my place in the world, I am not a million, dollar, a million subscriber channel. No. But I feel like I got a little bit of traction early on from talking about carpet cleaning, trying to go to carpet world understand them yeah. and bring it to detailing. I think that's probably my closest thing to like, oh, that's how I started watching Hawk Pro Detailing. Right. Aside from dissing Matt Mormon's uh, Obsessed Garage pressure washer. <laughs> but I'm not I'm not so much a hater anymore. I don't want to no. review products just to take them down. But I do speak my mind. Yeah. Um, as folks know. So Exactly. Which um, is a good thing. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not sugar coated in any way. Uh, what you say is what you feel. Yep. And you know Nick wears his emotions on his sleeve. It's just who he is. It's who I am. Yeah. I'm very open like that. Yeah. yeah, which is great. You know, you're you're not corporate in any way. You're not, you know, um, people send him products. Sometimes he reviews them. Sometimes, sometimes you review them. Sometimes yeah. you don't. Yeah. You know, if you don't have anything good to say about the product, I don't think you've ever done a review that's just all bad. I did one, but it turns out it was actually a pretty good product. We don't need to name it, but it didn't do what I wanted it to do, but it did something well enough. Um, yeah. It was a bigger name in the industry, but uh, for the most part, I don't I don't go after after hack jobs. That's not what I'm about. Like, yeah. I, like you know, you sort of realize that like 
people can get clicks on that and that is what mm -hmm. they need to do. I honor that, but yeah. like, I also believe in karma and like this industry is pretty small. And so I, I say what I mean and I say what I feel, but I don't take unnecessary pot shots, which maybe I did when I was starting. Cause I was like, can anybody hear me? You <laughs> yeah, know, I didn't exactly. have any, anyone watching. So what's the future for the detailing industry, the way you see it? That's a great question because that's a question I want to ask Ivan. <laughs> um, it feels like there's a lot of people in the game right now. And I don't know how that shakes out. I don't know how inflation affects things. Ceramic coatings are becoming ubiquitous. I think we're just going to continue to see phenomenal products more available to the everyday consumer. And I guess my question, because I'm turning this around, is how do you see that evolving? With the ubiquity of awesome products available to the consumer, how does a professional set themselves apart as more information becomes available and more people get into the game? See what I did there? Right, exactly. And we'll, we'll see my interview <laughs> on his channel later. Okay. But uh, I probably am faster at editing because I don't edit. I just post. Uh, there's a bit of editing, but minimal, minimalistic. And people, uh, there are people who just want to like listen to this video while they're polishing the car. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's, that's me. I watch YouTube videos, yeah. but I listen to them. Right. Like podcasts. No, I think the... The home hobbyist has always been there mm -hmm. and always will be. And the professional has always been there and always will be. Yes, the, the lines are being crossed in terms of product. You know, it used to be that the consumer available product was not great. Right. And the professional available product, some of them are not great either. That's uh, so true. Yeah. That's so know, true. So the lines are being crossed there. But not everybody has the passion to detail their car. Mm. You know, just like some people geek out and they buy a smoker and a barbecue and a griddle and uh, they're doing their own steaks at home and they're doing, you know, their own barbecue at home. And other people go to a barbecue restaurant or go to a steakhouse. So it's the same, same level. The industry, yes, we're, especially on the consumer side, the products are getting a lot better. They're mm. getting to the point of being professional products. The one danger that a lot of companies have is they're now having their consumer line of products mm. being basically they're just rebottling their professional line. Yeah. And they're afraid of what the consumer or what the professional detailer will think about their consumer line. Mm. You know, the, and a lot of companies, the consumer line should never be used by a professional detailer. Not because the product isn't good, yeah. because it's aimed at the consumer, meaning the professional products always have a dilution ratio. We want to buy and concentrate. We don't, sure, sure. We don't want to have to deal with, or we don't mind dealing with having the um, you know, diluting products and all that because we yeah, want to yeah. save money. Yeah. The consumer wants to have fun. And the consumer doesn't necessarily want to be worried about dilution ratios. Yeah. Just give it to me in a bottle ready to use. So in the professional side, you don't have RTU chemicals too often. Whereas in the consumer side, RTU chemicals are king. And for a lot of companies, mm. the professional and the, you know, the difference between the pro version and the consumer version is simply that dilution ratio. Right. One is use it straight out of the bottle. The other one is go for it. You need to dilute it down to this to do this product. You need to dilute it to this to do this, et cetera, et cetera. So I see that as a, you know, the, the difference between the consumer and the pro product isn't really the performance of the product anymore. It's just the ease of use or the ease of let's take it from the bottle and start using it as to I have to dilute it. I have to do this and that. What is the best product you found in the hey, last? Oh, I'm interviewing you. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> maybe we should just do this together and publish it on both our channels. Yeah. I'm like, I'm liking the vibe here, yeah. and I don't want to shoot another video and edit yeah. it because it's just there's too much. There's too much going on, guys. Yeah. Um, oh, we'll do. But that. it's fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're gonna do that too. Right? Okay. Um, okay. Well, then I don't get to ask you questions. So fire away, sir. Well, what's your? You know, you've tested a lot of products. Yeah. You've done a lot of, you know, comparison videos, things like that. What is the product that made you go wow the most? There's a couple of products recently. One of them is Ulex from Kotchemi. It's an adhesive remover. And yeah. 
I've searched far and wide. It's a weird uh, niche product that you don't need until you need it. Yes. Right? PPF removal, tar removal. Um, it's really insane. I actually did, there was some marker embedded on an inside door. And the stuff smells, so you really had to air it out. But it was purple marker. Nothing would get it out. Full strength degreaser. You make that decision. Am I really going to go after this? You know, it was an older van, but I knew that if I could be a superhero in the moment, it'd be cool. Got it off with Ulex and then did a super greasy, thick, you know, leather dressing. And it yeah. looked awesome, you know, because it had faded the little spot a little right, bit. Yeah. But, um, you know, and you want to have the integrity like, okay, if a customer doesn't see it, it's not there. I believe that, but I also don't want them to feel like down the line was deceptive. And I felt like I honored the intention of making the car look good. Yeah. I got rid of the marker. I added the dressing. Um, and I think that, that it should last. Uh, it's Sarah trim from the last coat. And yeah. That stuff is crazy. It, it's greasy and heck, but like, if you need a real superpower, like cover something up, you know, you magic eraser through the leather coating or something. Yeah. Who did that? I don't know. Who? I would never know. <laughs> it's like burning that. paint. Yeah, yeah you've never happens. done that. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty awesome. So Ulex is a is a is a great product. Um, and then we've loved Owner's Pride ceramic detailer. It's this pink product. Owner's Pride is yeah. a professional coating company. I mean, it's not cheap. It's like fifty bucks a bottle. But it's worth it. We keep buying it. We buy it in in uh, in uh, gallon size. It's a little more yeah. economical, and and you know we've installed Owner's Pride coatings and stuff, and so we're part of that team. Um, but yeah, I mean they make they make some some good products, and and there's a lot of awesome products out there. I'm sure I've heard of all kinds of spray ceramics and sealants, and there's just so many good ones out there. Yeah, I just happen to like Owner's Pride ceramic detailer. We love it for that. Like it's a drying aid or like a spray. It, it like it doesn't like fill like a paste wax does, right. but it it's for time and efficiency and just the look of your car. Like I've been playing around with like turtle wax seal and shine, you know, because you've seen a lot yeah. about that. It's been around for years. It works great, but I just did Owner's Pride ceramic detailer recently, and it was like, oh yeah, I remember why I love this so much. Yeah, because I like to try to keep it simple. I go down the rabbit hole, but then I also wash my own car, and who's got yeah. time for that? So you know, but uh, yeah, yeah. And now you're transitioning, like I mentioned, the the detailing shop that you started, Hawk Pro Detail. Yeah. You brought on a partner after yep. we met. Yeah. And now that partner is actually taking over that aspect of the business. So Absolutely. the day-to-day -day detailing, that's not what you're doing anymore. And if there's a power in a human story and being vulnerable, I'll just say it. Like, I, I have a full-time job. I have an hour commute each way. And I'm showing up as a dad now. And so... There's just not a lot of time. And right. so I do feel like a poser because I'm not in those trenches every day. But if you look at my channel, it goes back four or five years now. Yeah. Know that I was in those trenches, freezing my butt off in Carhartt and muck boots, in yeah. cold garages and winter mobile detailing, and like dehydrating and losing 20 pounds in the summertime from the hot summer driveway mobile details. Yeah. So I've done it all. I still feel like I should be Mike Phillips getting in those, you know, details and polish jobs every single day or weekend. I'm still working on cars, but it, it's not the way that I used to. So I sort of feel like a little bit of a poser. So that's sort of been a little shame for me that I'm working through for you guys. So like I honor and I love that you guys are out there in those trenches still. Um, but I love the education part. I'm obviously yeah. a talker. Yeah. So I like talking to people and like, I want to be kind of a voice of education. If there's a room for that, you know, not to say I, I belong in the industry or I'm anybody, but like I enjoy talking to people. I'm passionate about it. You can't fake passion. No, exactly. And when it comes to cleaning cars, like let's go, let's go down the rabbit hole and, and let's do it. Let's talk about it. Yeah. And there's enough of a community where I feel like there's probably a place for me there. Oh, definitely. You know, your, your strength is your ability to communicate and you know, your full-time job outside of detailing is definitely communication. Uh, so there's that aspect of it. And yes, there How is. How mysterious, Ivan. Yeah, how much? Well, I'll let you say it if you want to say it, but uh, I know you. I'll I be the think, mystery man. That's we'll leave I, it. At I don't that. think you've ever said it on your channel. So a couple people know. Okay, but nonetheless, what Nick um, is transitioning to the educational role, I think it's a role that fits you perfectly. You and people, I hope. Sorry, I knocked it. I hope you all know I'm real. You know what I yeah. mean? That I've been in those like trenches and streets and yeah, done it. And if I say it, I mean it. So yeah, exactly. Whatever comes next, I hope. You know, I get to communicate that, and like y'all know that I'm not, I'm I'm just me. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And with that, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. Nick will be monitoring this uh, 
interview as well. So he'll be able to answer your questions. And of course, I'm always there to answer questions as well. And you know, if anyone has watched my channel, if, if you want to know more about the story, I don't know if you do. Like I've been sitting on it for a while. I shot videos when I left my old shop, came to my new one. I was documenting some of the process and I was like, do I want to make like a sad video about what it's really like to be a detailer and like avoid these mistakes. Um, but the last thing I'll say, I don't want to get too philosophical, but some of our pain and our past troubles and our failures, if you want to look at them like that, I look at it now as like the compost, right? right. Like your old eggs and milk or what, are, what is compost? Uh, vegetables, Vegetable, yeah, you know, fruit, whatever yeah. stuff that's going to rot in the floor. But you put it in that garden, and I'm growing the garden now. So, like, it's actually a beautiful thing. So, if y'all are going through hardships, I know mental health is a big deal in detailing. Everyone's fronting online that everything's great, and they're so good at polishing paint. But real life is different. Just know that I've gone through some of that, and, uh, yeah. It's uh, the, the compost for the garden you're growing now. There's so much to learn from, from the hard times, even if we don't know when we're going through them. So, if you want me to maybe tell more of that story on my channel, let me know in the comments. Yep. Uh, I like to talk a lot, so don't let you know, don't get me started because then it's all of a sudden what's the meaning of life and all that. But yeah, yeah, excellent. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next one. See you guys.